Hello everyone and welcome to another video. In this tutorial series, we will try to create a semi-realistic and modular first-person shooter that you can use in almost any scenario. I will chunk the series into multiple videos for better understanding and the sake of duration for each video. So in the first part, we will learn how to create the first-person movement system, which consists of walking, jumping, sprinting and also crouching mechanics. Also for the next part, we will try to create the head pop and footstep system, procedural hands movements, weapon system and etc. So make sure to join my Discord server to get access to all the scripts and real-time support. Also subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for many amazing content. Now without any further to do, let's jump into Unity and start creating our FPS system. Alright, let's start by creating an empty game object as our main player. Then we need to add a rigid body and a capsule collider to it. Now let's make the main camera child of a game object named camera pivot and make it the child of the main character game object so it will move with our character and acts as its head. Now let's create a C sharp script and name it FPS movement or whatever as you wish. Now first thing first we need couple of variables for our controller such as a rigid body, a float as walk speed, a vector tree which will represent the player inputs, another vector tree as our rigid body velocity, and the final vector tree for determining the velocity change that will be added to our rigid body for moving it on ground. Okay, first let's create our input like this inside fixed update method. Let's add couple of lines of codes here to make the magic happens. We're simply using user input for pushing our rigid body on desired axis. But first we need to cap the velocity. To do so, we're simply getting the difference between current velocity and desired velocity and then applying it to the rigid body using add force and velocity change mode. As you can see by pressing each key on keyboard, the player will move to that direction. But we missed something, and that is the rotation of player. We have to make it to look around on mouse move. To do so, let's create another C sharp script and name it maybe mouse rotator. Inside the script, we need a couple of variables. The first one is a vector tube where we will use it as a rotation limiter or rotation range, a float as rotation speed, and a float as our smoothing time, which we will use it to make our rotation a bit smoother. Also, we need three vector trees for target angles, follow angles, and follow velocity. And finally, a quaternion as our initial rotation. Now inside the start method, let's cache the initial rotation of our game object, which equals the transform.local rotation. Now let's create our mouse movement logic by creating two floats and read the values from input mouse x axis and input mouse y axis. For clamping the values for limited range rotation, we will clamp the target angles of each axis between the mean and max allowed limited range which we created as a vector to. Now let's smoothly interpolate the current values to target values by using vector 3smooth damp between current angle to final angle. And finally, let's update the actual rotation of the transform to desired rotation. Alright, by attaching this script to any game object, you can start to rotate on X and Y axis of that game object with the desired speed. So in our case, we will use it in two places, the actual player and the camera that acts as the head of player. Okay, everything is working perfectly. Now let's extend the player movement logic by adding a jump logic to it. For that, we need a boolean for enabling jump as an optional logic, a float as jump power, a public key code as the key for triggering the jump, and finally another bool to check if the player has been jumped already. And of course, a boolean to check if player is grounded or not. Making jump to work needs a function called ground checking where we will constantly check to see if player is in ground, then we are able to jump. So let's create this. Now let's call it an update method, and then we will simply checking if player is on ground by calling if physics.raycast is colliding with the ground and the is in ground rule is true, otherwise is grounded equals false. Alright, now let's create the actual jump plugin by creating a function called jump and call it an update method like this. Now inside the jump function body, we will double check for being on ground and then we will add a force to our rigid body in upward direction to make it jump. Alright, time for adding sprinting. 
let's add it by creating another variables, such as a boolean for determining if player can sprint, a public key code for choosing from, a float for our actual sprint speed, another float as our original walk speed, and finally another private boolean to check whether our player is sprinting or not. First thing first, let's equalize the original walk speed to our walk speed in start method. Now let's create a sprint function and call it inside the update method like this. If enable a sprint, and if the desired input key is down, then the sprinting is true and start sprinting. Now what actually we want to do is to lift the walk speed to sprint speed in the amount of time so the player's actual speed will be increased smoothly over time and decrease back to walk speed if we release the sprint key. We will use doTwin library for our lerping functions because it's the easiest twinning library for Unity which also is free. I will put the link in the description, go and download after importing it into your project, add using dg.twinning like this and you're good to go. Now let's create the sprint logic by simply checking if not sprinting, then we will lerp from whatever the current walk speed is to our original walk speed which we declared earlier using doTwin. After that, set the is sprinting bool to true. And in an else statement, we will lerp from current speed to sprint speed again using doTwin. Alright, for finalizing the sprinting, we will add another line of code to determine when the player releases the sprint key like this. Then, is the sprinting equals to false. Alright, now let's add the final mechanic which is crouch. The main frame of crouch logic is the same as the sprinting logic except we are aiming for the player height. For crouching, we will actually play with the capsule collider size and center values to reach our goal. We will simply set the size of capsule collider to half or less depending on your needs to fake the player sit operations. To do so, again we will need couple of variables, such as a boolean to enabling crouch, another one for making it hold or one time press logic, a key code for triggering it, a float as our desired height of player, a float for the crouch speed, because we will change the speed in crouch same as a sprint. And finally, the capsule collider that we want to change the values of and the camera pivot transform. We will need camera pivot for decreasing the camera height to same level as player body. First, remember to access and cache the capsule collider component in the start method like this. Now let's create the crouch function and call it an update loop again like this. If enable crouch, then check for the input of player and if player not holding the crouch key, then start crouching. If it's holding the crouch key, then start crouching again until releasing it. And finally, if player neither pressing or holding the key, then crouch is false. Now let's add the actual logic by creating couple of variables again. The first one is a vector tree to store and change the initial center of the capsule collider. So if we start to crouch, then we have a reference to go back to and that is the initial center of collider whatever that is in the start method. Also another vector tree for our camera pivot initial position. And finally, we need a float as our initial height of the capsule collider. Now we will check to see if not crouching, then we will lerp some values to their initial values. The first one is the capsule collider center and then capsule collider's height and finally camera joint's position. Also we will have the initial and original speed of player while we are not crouching. Then in an else statement condition which means if player is crouching we will simply lerp the current center and height of the capsule collider to desired crouch values. Also the camera joint position and of course we will decrease the player speed to desired speed. And finally, we will set the is crouching boolean to true or false based on the condition of crouching. Alright everyone, so this is the end of this video. For the next part of the series, we will create the head pop effect which is seen in this video. So stay tuned, it's coming soon. Okay. I hope you learned something from this video. Make sure to join my Discord server to get access to all the scripts and real-time support about all my contents on YouTube. And also subscribe to my channel for many amazing upcoming contents. Stay safe and until the next one, cheers!